I as a user, I should be able to just say, here's the, here's the data I need to move. Right? Here's a big directory, you know, the terabyte of data, or here's 100,000 files that I need to get from point A to point B. Just make it happen, right? Hand it off to Globus Online. Let Globus Online deal with it. You know, babysitting your transfers and creating stuff to shove data around is not a particularly good use of a researcher's time, right? So we're trying to take that mundane stuff off the end user's lap and just make it work. You know, they really latched onto this because from their perspective, this was a, a capability that they could offer to their users without them having to do much of anything, right? They don't have to run any software other than the grid FTP server to interface to their file system. We provide the help desk, the support, and tools for them, right? So it was a great way that they could improve the service to their users. As a user, the approach is I hand this off to Globus Online. I sort of describe my request. Take this directory from here and move it over there. Or take this list of 100,000 files from here and move it over there. Globus Online will in turn then do that. So let's actually do a transfer. Enough talking. So an endpoint is the, the term we use to mean a storage system to which I want to do transfers to or from. So now it's the first time I've touched Exceed, right? I, I just created a new account, so obviously I can't just go use a resource, right? So what I need to do here is log into Exceed, right? I need to provide the credentials, you know, which are my normal Exceed or TerraGrid, which are the same thing um, from a security perspective. Right? I just provide my normal TerraGrid or Exceed portal login here. So Tiki type my password correctly, authenticate. So what happened here is now Globus Online using Grid FTP, which is a standard Exceed service out there on all the different Exceed resources and many others, just went out there, used Grid FTP to log into to Lincoln and do a directory listing on my home directory. So let's actually do a transfer. Right? I can take, say, this Go directory. Now you notice this time it doesn't actually prompt me for my password right? because I've already logged into Exceed. Exceed has identities that work across this set of machines, so it remembers that. It can reuse that same ticket for that period of time that it's got it. So logged in, I've selected my source on the left side of Go data, press the transfer button, and we're requesting. So let's go see how it's doing. I can hit the view transfers here on the browser, or I can use the go to drop down. But let's bring up the, the transfer window. And there's my transfer. It's already completed, seven files total in it. Um, if I click on it on either the progress bar or the task ID, I can drill in and see a bit more information. I can even drill in more and see more details. So if I hit the view event log here, I can even drill in and see copious details about what actually happened. I can see directory, you know, started the directory listing, completed it, and then did each of my file transfers. The key thing here is when that any fault that we run into we'll drop an event here. So we can now actually monitor what's going on, see what's failing at very fine detail on the transfer, which helps us and you sort of determine, you know, you know what's going wrong if things go wrong. All right, so we saw a transfer between my machine, or between two Exceed machines, but what if I want it to my laptop, right? It's great that I can do between the supercomputing centers, but often the data is on my own machines or I want to get the results back to my own machines. So let's do it. So what I need to do to do a transfer to my own machine is I need essentially that, well, you know, an endpoint on my machine. I need that thing that Globus Online can talk to. And we call that Globus Connect. So from the transfer page I can get to it, or again from the dashboard I can get to it. It's not a client. I never directly interact with this after I install it. Under the covers it's just getting some of the base software necessary to allow a transfer to happen. Let's download it, grab the Mac version, install it, standard drag and drop installer, put it in my applications folder. Now I'm going to go into that direction directory, start up Globus Connect, open it, and what I'm asked for is a setup key. Right? So how do I get a setup key? Just go back to the web page, fill in my endpoint name, so we'll call this my laptop some description, you can put whatever description you want in there. Generate setup key. Now all I need to do is copy and paste that from there to there. Okay, and we are on. So now I can just in my browser window type my laptop. There it is. Return. Now because it's a Globus Online, I've gone through Globus Online to do this, 
the, la the Globus Connect is all part of the Globus Online environment, so it doesn't have to prompt for passwords again. So there's a directory listing my home directory and my laptop. As a user, as I said, with Globus Online, I get an account on cli.globusonline.org. This, this account, the shell that I get there, it's a restricted shell, right? I can't do everything with it, but it has the commands that allow me to do everything you just saw and more with Globus Online from a command line, right? So the idea is, from my laptop or from any machine, I can do SSH to that and run various Globus Online commands. So for example, we have an SCP lookalike command, right? We did this to make it familiar and convenient to people. Um, we have an SCP lookalike command that uses Globus Online, uses Grid FTP. So in this case, all we're doing is saying SSH to CLI, run the SCP command to do a recursive transfer. We actually also have synchronization, rsync-like style sync. So we'll say only, uh, only transfer files that have changed since the last time, and sync level three means do check sums on both ends. You can also say only check file sizes or modification times of the side. And let's run it in the background. That's what the minus D is. In this case, it's going from OLCF, Oak Ridge uh, LCF, to my laptop, right? And I should also mention, if you've got GSI SSH, if you use that, you can also configure your Globus Online account to accept your GSI SSH credential as well, so you can use that. And that's really convenient if you're doing scripting from portals or from automated programs where you have proxy certs available. So I've now logged into CLI.globusonline. We have help. So I do help command, we can see all the commands available. So there's the SCP and transfer. SCPs are easy lookalike. Transfer is a more detailed, extensive one I can do a lot more with. Task management, I can check status of things, cancel, drill into details, all that stuff you saw in the browser you can get through here. I can manage endpoints, right? Any user, the way the system is dying, any user can add their own endpoints. By default, those endpoints are only visible to that user but they can make them public, meaning they can make those endpoint definitions public to other people. So that's how the exceed endpoints were created. A, an exceed user, one of the admins, uh, created an exceed account on Globus Online, came into the CLI, did endpoint ads to create the various exceed endpoints, and then made them public so that others have access to them. Right? It doesn't, by making something public, it doesn't mean they necessarily have rights to use the server. They can't necessarily log in. They still need the appropriate identity locally to, to talk to that server, but it gives them that convenient name in Globus Online to work with it. So let's uh, redo one of the transfers we just did. Let's go ahead and do an SCP minus R of exceed uh, whoops, hash Lincoln. Can't type today. Tilde slash go data, and let's move that to, let's take it to my laptop. And we'll call this exceed demo on my laptop. All right, so I'll fire up my transfer. It starts doing it, and uh, I don't want to wait for it. So let's go ahead and background it. I get my task ID, and I can jump over to the browser. So if I go back to the view transfers, there's the one I just started up from Lincoln to my laptop, right? So it's all the same backend, all completely consistent between them. And in fact, this is a common usage we see where people will script their submissions with the command line, but then use our browser interface to monitor progress on them. And so we're transferring away, but we can also do those, the look at it from the command line. Right? So I can do status to see all my active jobs. Right, so I see one was submitted through the API, which was that bigger one that's still running. There's the one I just did. Um, I can say, show me all of my jobs, not just the current ones, but also the ones that have succeeded, or maybe only show me the last three. of them. And every file that's transferred itself even has a task ID. So if I really want to get crazy, I can even be going in on specific files to look at them, figure out you know, if there's specific events related to files. Right. So this is there. Again, think now sort of programmatic and scripting interfaces, I can start seeing much more detail. Of course, if I want a script, I probably don't want some verbose human-oriented interface like this. So what we've also got is the ability on all of our commands to do things like, say, let's output it in key value form. I can never remember all the field names, so let's print them out. And all I want is the task ID and the status. So I get that. What this is really designed for is now from my own laptop, from my own client, I can start doing these things remotely. And I can run commands like 
SSH to Globus Online, so we're using SSH as our remoting layer. Run a status command, print it out in these forms, and then let's pipe it to grep for, uh, for active. So you can start seeing how with this sort of interface, it becomes very easy for me to take commands like this SSH and drop that into a Python script, which will then take this output, output pick it apart, put it into a, into a hash table, and or associated array and start using it for all sorts of stuff. So, you know, if you want more information, you know, go out, just start using it. You know, you just got the, 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 the tour, so, you know, there's not a whole lot more to it than that. And don't hesitate to email us at support at Globus Online. Happy to answer questions, you know, how do I use this, how do I do, you know, whatever, or if you're running into problems, don't hesitate to drop us a note and we'll, we'll help out. So why don't we open it up for questions at this point? Uh